Hi. If you're inserting this tape, then I'd like to thank you for keeping a level head during these uncertain times. We know that for some people it is difficult to stay at home. That's why we've partnered with Troop 123 in order to bring valuable scouting information to you, wherever you are. In this series, you'll learn the ins and outs of scouting on the World Wide Web, various activities to keep your body and brain active, and all the scouting information that you'd come to expect on a typical Monday meeting. Before we begin, let's go over the do's and don'ts for the online meeting. Although you may not have to wear the Class A uniform, be sure to dress appropriately. Be sure to also act respectfully and mute your mic unless asked a question. During the meeting, avoid doing tasks that can be a distraction to your fellow scouts. Also keep in mind where you are during the meeting, as certain things in the background can also be a distraction. Thank you for keeping an open mind as we go through these times of uncertainty together. As always, be sure to wash your hands and maintain social distancing. If you need help navigating this series, please refer to the Surviving a Pandemic guidebook that comes with your box set. It provides detailed explanations of each episode and its topic. Welcome to Scouting on the World Wide Web. Stay safe out there. Hey there, welcome back. I hope you've been doing your part of slowing the spread of this pandemic by staying home. We understand it's difficult for some people to adjust to quarantine life. That's why in this episode we'll be going into ways to improve yourself personally, in school, as well as some ways to have fun in order to make this transition easier. Since we're not able to go to school, the main source of our routine is gone. Because of this, it may be easy to slip out of regimen, but having a daily routine is exactly how you can make this quarantine life a good one. The first thing is to wake up around the same time every day, and I'm not talking about 2 p.m. Going to bed earlier and getting up earlier gives you more time to do what you need to do throughout the day, which allows you more time to do what you want to do later. For a lot of us, getting up can be a struggle, so try brainstorming something to accomplish as soon as you wake up. Personally, I try to eat breakfast and take a shower as soon as I get up. Doing this will leave you feeling ready to start the day, resulting in a more productive one overall. If you spend a lot of time in your room, try opening some blinds. Sunlight is a great way of bettering your mood and will keep you from losing track of time throughout the day. Lastly, try to maintain an exercise routine. Working out for a couple minutes each day is another great mood lifter, as well as a way of staying healthy at a time when it's so easy to just sit around. Much like what we said, routine is the most effective way of improving school life while in quarantine. It may be easy to look at all the assignments you have for the week and say, I don't have to start now, I've got a whole week to do it, but trust me, if you create a work schedule for your school assignments, you won't be spending those late Sunday nights finishing up that English essay. If you can't tell, I'm speaking from experience. Schedules not only help you fight procrastination, but they also allow you the opportunity to choose when it's time to work and when it's time to relax. You can choose to space out your work throughout the week, clocking out, so to speak, around 6 every day. Or you could take your work in chunks, focusing on all the assignments for one class for each day, leaving the rest of the week to do what you want. It's up to you. With all this talk of routine and schedules, it might seem like there isn't that much room for fun. But on the contrary, there are a lot of upsides to the amount of time we have here in quarantine. This quarantine really depends on your outlook. It can be an isolating and disheartening time, or it can be a time of fun and self-improvement. Quarantine doesn't have to mean isolation. With the advent of the World Wide Web and cellular devices, staying connected with others is as easy as ever. Video chatting with your friends is a great way to lift your spirits even if that means showing up a little early to an online meeting. This extra time on our hands gives us an opportunity to not only have a good time, but also to improve ourselves. Take that extra time to learn a new hobby, figure out how that guitar even works. Empty that backlog of games or movies that you've been trying to get to. The choice is yours to make. And for our Cyber Scouts, there's also a variety of activities that you can do at home, but we'll save that for a later episode. I hope that you have the information that you need in order to make this transition to quarantine life easier. For now, thank you for staying home and washing your hands. See you next time. Hey there, welcome back. Since quarantine's got us all stuck in the same place, some of us might be finding it difficult to stay healthy. 
That's why in this episode, we'll go into some helpful tips on how to stay strong, both physically and mentally, while in quarantine. Like we said in a previous episode, maintaining a good sleep schedule will help your productivity. But on top of that, it also helps your mental health. Our bodies have a natural sleep-wake cycle, and deviating too far from it is linked to increased anxiety, irritability, and even depression. So even though we're all still at home, try setting an alarm and waking up at a reasonable time. Another way to improve your mental health is to take occasional breaks when you work. Of course it's important to get your work done, but working day in and day out without any breaks causes unneeded stress. So, be sure to fit some mental breaks into your schedule. This could be during meal times or whenever is convenient for you. Although ordering meals has its conveniences, eating takeout every day doesn't provide you with the necessary nutrition that you need to stay healthy. It's okay to indulge yourself every once in a while, but by preparing a meal yourself, you ensure you have all the necessary food groups in order to grow. These include grains, vegetables, fruit, dairy, and protein. Nowadays, fruits and vegetables are more important than ever because they contain valuable vitamins and minerals that help to boost your immune system. Preparing your own meals can also be a way of getting creative. Try looking around your cupboards and experimenting with ingredients that you have. You might end up making something you like that you never would have tried before. And if you're low on ingredients, chances are your supermarket has a contactless way of shopping that you can use. Additionally, try to limit your eating to meal times. Now there's nothing wrong with having a snack every now and then, but constantly snacking throughout the day can lead to an excess of calories, which causes weight gain. Before you snack, ask yourself this question. Am I actually hungry, or am I just bored? Staying hydrated is also extremely important. Some of us might not feel as thirsty because of this change in lifestyle, but water is a vital ingredient to our bodies that can't just be replaced with juices or soda. The amount of water depends on the person, but drinking eight eight ounce glasses of water throughout the day is a good rule of thumb for staying hydrated. Since most of our days in quarantine are spent at home, it may be tempting to sit around all day, but maintaining a habit of regular exercise benefits us both physically and mentally. The easiest thing to do is simply sit less. Remember those mental breaks we talked about earlier? Use that time to get up and walk around the house. Get some fresh air or play with the family pet. It doesn't really matter what you do, just get up and do something. Some people might think that you need a gym membership and a ton of equipment in order to have a meaningful workout. But by practicing exercises that utilize your body weight, you can still improve your health. Here are some examples of exercises that you could do at home while in quarantine. First, you'd want to start with a warm-up. These are exercises designed in order to get your heart rate up and stretch your muscles to avoid injury. You might do a short rep of five push-ups, followed by some high knees and arm circles and some arm and leg stretches, but try whatever works for you. Now we move on to the actual workout. You could start with around 15 to 20 push-ups, making sure to keep your back straight and breaking 90 degrees with your arms every time you go down. Then, you could do 15 to 20 lunges for each leg, followed up by 20 to 30 sit-ups. If you wanted to add a little cardio, you could also do 15 to 20 jumping jacks. If you wanted to work out with more intensity, you could also add burpees and squats to this list. Depending on the person, repeat this workout for multiple rounds. Also, add some exercises of your own if you'd like. The exercise you do should be tailored to you. Following the workout, you'd want to do some kind of cool down. So take some of the arm circles, stretches, high knees, and anything else that you added in the warm-up and repeat those here. The most important part is remaining consistent with your workout. If you decide to do it every day or every other day, your goal is to stick with what you've set and try to improve over time. I hope that with this video we all now know how we can stay a little healthier during this quarantine. From regular exercise, to good nutrition, to keeping your mind in mind, everything helps. As always, thank you for staying home and washing your hands. See you next time. Hey there, welcome back. For some of us, staying active and scouting took a back seat while we transitioned from normal life to quarantine life. But now that we've all adjusted to this change, it's important that we continue our journey as scouts together in this new setting. That's why in this episode, we'll highlight some ways to stay active in scouting while stuck at home. Since we're not able to meet in person, the troop now holds meetings online. Like the traditional kind, it provides valuable information as well as an opportunity to learn new scout skills. 
Along with that, these meetings are also useful for learning about any future events that could be happening in the troop. For example, in the coming weeks, virtual campouts could be a way to bring the camping experience to scouts at home. Aside from meetings, participating in weekly events held by the troop is another way to participate, and you might be able to earn some prizes while you're at it. On a weekly basis, Troop 123 holds a competition revolving around some aspect of scouting. From pocket knives to gift cards, there's a variety of prizes to be earned by the winning submission, so be sure to keep your eye out for the next competition. Believe it or not, there are still a number of ways to progress in the troop despite being in quarantine. Firstly, try looking at your rank requirements in your scout book. There are actually a number of requirements that you'd be able to complete at home. Once you've found one that you think you can complete, with your parents' permission, schedule a meeting with your patrol leader and go over it with them. Be sure to keep track of what requirements you got signed off with your patrol leader, so that you can get them signed off officially when this quarantine is over. Another way you can still progress in scouting is by earning merit badges. Resources for most merit badges, including merit badge books and workbooks, can be found online. And while perhaps not all merit badges you do can be completed at home, you can get a pretty good start on a lot of them. This means that when everything goes back to normal, you'll be a couple requirements away from sewing that badge to your sash. If you're feeling lost on deciding which merit badge to start, check the troop email. There was an email sent out last month that provided a list of merit badges as well as an explanation of how much progress you could make on them while in quarantine. Once you've decided which merit badge to go with, be sure to contact the Scoutmaster for approval to begin the badge. After you've been approved, contact the Troop Merit Badge Counselor that goes with that badge in order to see if they'll counsel you as you complete it. Something to keep in mind is that the Troop follows the rule of too deep leadership, so if you're ever contacting your Merit Badge Counselor or another Troop adult, be sure to include a second adult leader when you do so. For Life Scouts currently working on their Eagle, times like these can be pretty frustrating. Perhaps your project has been put on hold, or maybe you haven't been able to start because of this quarantine. And while the projects themselves probably won't happen until this is all over, there are still ways that you can make progress on your Eagle rank. Like we said in the previous section, there are a number of merit badges that you'd be able to work on, and some badges, like Family Life and Personal Management, which can be worked on almost exclusively at home, are also Eagle required. When it comes to the project itself, now is a great time to brainstorm and plan out some possible projects that you could do after quarantine. Research the equipment and materials required in order to get a general idea for your project. That way, when this quarantine is over, you'll be that much closer to executing your plan for real. Remember that this pandemic affects everyone, including local organizations and businesses. So be sure to keep them in mind when you're coming up with the beneficiary for your project. With this information, I hope that we can look at these times of quarantine not as an obstacle, but rather an opportunity in our journey together as scouts. We are truly living in bizarre and uncertain times, but together we can get through it. Thank you for staying positive. And as always, thank you for staying home and washing your hands. See you next time. Oh, hey there, welcome back. Today's episode is going to be about doing a good turn. Now, I'm sure most of our cyber scouts out there knows what it means to do a good turn. It's the scout slogan, after all. Although it might seem difficult because we can't go out quite like we used to, there are still some ways that you can do a good turn for your friends, family, as well as in your community while you're stuck where you are. As we all know, the elderly and immunocompromised have to take the greatest precautions during this time. As a result, they aren't able to go out to run errands or have the interactions that they could before. One way you could do a good turn from where you are is give them a call, check in on your elderly family members to see how they're doing, or you could run errands for them as a way to help. Along with that, you should check in with your other friends and family members as well. Isolation of this kind is new for everybody, and it affects everyone differently. Calling them every once in a while isn't very hard to do, and it can mean the world of difference for someone who's struggling through this time. You would never know who might need it most, so try to make this simple gesture a habit as we go forward. On top of helping those you know personally, there's also a number of ways that you can do a good turn in the community. In times of crisis like these, local hospitals and first responders are on the front lines ensuring that people like us stay safe. So, one way to do a good turn is to personally thank them for what they do. This could be in the form of an email or a written letter. Written letters feel more personal and I'm sure they'll appreciate it that much more if you do. But if you want to minimize risk, you can take a picture of it and email it to them just the same. 
Additionally, try contacting your local food banks. Organizations like the Salvation Army and the CCA need donations more than ever, since going out to get food can be a challenge for some. While on the topic of donations, since we have some extra time on our hands, do a good turn by looking through your room to see if there's anything that you'd be able to donate. Places like Goodwill are still accepting donations, so consider this an opportunity to do some spring cleaning. Old books, clothes, and anything else that you might not have used in a while could be valuable gifts for those less fortunate in our community. Local businesses and organizations have also been hit pretty hard during this time. So maybe consider buying a gift card for your local restaurant, fostering a pet to ease the strain on your local animal shelters, or doing anything else that comes to mind that might allow you to support them during this time. With this information, I hope doing a good turn doesn't sound as distant a concept during this time of separation. Something to keep in mind is that although some states are starting to open back up, we should still remember to do what it takes to stay safe. As always, thank you for staying home and washing your hands. See you next time. Hey there, welcome back. With school winding down and summer around the corner, we're once again experiencing a period of transition. That's why in this episode, we'll be going into some things to remember from this program as we go forward into summer and beyond. With school coming to a close, it's more important than ever to maintain your own schedule. Remember to keep a regular sleep cycle. Go outside every once in a while. Maintain healthy eating habits and exercise regularly in order to maintain your physical and mental health. Keeping up with your routine ensures you won't drift into a sedentary lifestyle, and things like calendars and to-do lists are easy ways to keep yourself honest and active over the summer. It's also important to stay connected with those you know, whether that be family members or friends. If you ever feel isolated and alone, use these people as your support group, and don't be afraid to be that source of hope for someone else as well. Along with that, Remember that by staying active through weekly meetings in the troop email, there are a number of activities that you can do over the summer that will help you improve as scouts. The most important thing to take away from this series is that this time apart can be a wonderful opportunity to improve yourself personally and in scouting. Use this time to explore new hobbies and develop personal skills. When it comes to scouting, continue to work towards your goals, whether that be rank requirements, merit badges, or an Eagle Scout project. On top of that, keep in mind ways that you can do a good turn for members of your community. We're scouts after all. It's what we do. I'd like to thank you for joining me in this series. I sincerely hope it both informed and entertained you as we went through quarantine life together. I also hope that as we leave this chapter of our lives behind, it gives us a better appreciation for those aspects of life we've come to take for granted. Until then, thank you for staying positive. And as always, thank you for staying home and washing your hands. See you next time.